Now, so far, everything that we've done has happened automatically. As I was saying before the break, we load up the web browser, and right away it asks you to log in, and then you log in, and it accepts your name. Um, I want instead a trigger. I want a button click to then actually cause something to happen. So I want to rewrite this a little bit. I want to rewrite it so that I click a button, then it asks me to log in, and then it displays the name and such. So we're going to comment out a few things, uh, or re or change them a bit. So let's get back to our code. Let's do this. Uh, we know already that line 40 or so, uh, line 40 displays the name BMC that we've, that we've put here. Let's just comment out line 40 for the moment. I don't want it to display any name until we've uh, asked for a name. So just comment out line 40. It should be the line that says document dot right. Then uh, line forty one has uh, has the the item that says prompt. Okay, we're going to change that a little bit. Right now, the web browser gets to that portion of the code and it quick and it just simply executes that statement, which is to prompt us and save that name in the variable. I don't want that to happen until a click. So we'll see uh, over and over many times the importance of using what is known as a function. Um, a function, which is, let's see what's a good explanation of it. A function is basically, let's see. Do you mean a function like a math function? Functions consist of a series of statements that have been grouped together because they perform a specific task. So no, not a, not a math function. A function consists of a series of statements that have been grouped together because they perform a specific task. So in a sense, because it's going to follow similar syntax, log, dot log, or um, dot write, they're kind of like functions simply for their syntax. but. They're, we've been calling them methods. So we can invent our own methods. We'll be calling them functions. We're going to invent our own uh, JavaScript commands, basically. We're going to make our brand new command call login. There's no such thing as a JavaScript command called login. There's no such method as something called document.login. That doesn't exist. So we'll invent our own. Let's, for the moment, also comment out line 41, which is actually the part that it asks us to type our name and give ourselves a new line above the document.write. We're going to reuse this in a moment, but we'll have a new space before document write. And so we have the keyword of var to create a variable. We have a keyword to create a function, to create a brand new JavaScript command which is function. This is that we're about to create a function and we can then give it a name. This is the function keyword and we give it a function name. So next um, we'll call it login, open close parentheses. So we're about to invent login. And notice the syntax of it is similar to here. Write, open close parentheses, log, open close parentheses, login, open close parentheses. But because we're defining what the function does, we then, as the definition a moment ago said, we then need to say that these are all of these commands grouped together um, that happen when we invoke or when we run the login function. So continuing, we have a space there, curly brace. So uh, we looked at, we saw curly braces in CSS. The curly brace is shift square brace. It's next to the P. Press enter a couple of times. Close the curly brace, semicolon. So I'm saying, let's invent a function. We'll call it login. Open close parentheses, that's just required. No space there. That's one of the places that there's no space between login 
there's no space between the name of the function and then this these parameter um, parentheses. No space there. That will cause problems. That'll cause problems. This space here is optional, but I just put it to be able to read it. And technically, we don't even have to break this into multiple lines. But if we have multiple commands, it's going to be much more readable on multiple lines. So this could be all one long line off the edge of the page, but I broke it into several lines. And then the end of our login function, semicolon. So I want at least th two things to happen with the login function. I want to ask me for my name and display it on screen. Well, that's what line 41 and 45 are. So actually, I'm going to move, I'm going to cut and paste this line. Um, we won't need the comment tag or the comment. So I'm just going to select the actual statement, P1, etc. And this is cool. You might not have realized this at Notepad. Plus, plus. You can select your code and then drag and drop. So cut and paste will work. Don't do copy and paste. Cutting and pasting, I'm moving it. But I showed you, you can select some code and simply drag it. And I'll also just tab that. And remember, the tabs are also optional, but the tabs are useful to show that this code is inside of that code, inside of that function. And now I want to put document right right after the prompt, still inside the curly braces. So I'll actually I'll need a new line there. And then I want to move document right from its place outside of the function to into the function. So I'm selecting line 46. I'm selecting document.write and dragging it into the login function. So yeah, I've got an empty comment here with nothing. I might as well delete that. And then this empty space here. So those two statements that we know previously worked, now we've put them inside of a function called login. So the point of putting it in a function is it will allow us then to run these statements via a trigger. Previously they were just running as soon as the page loaded. Now they can run when I click on something, for example, or when I hover my mouse over something, or maybe when the page finishes loading, or any number of events will be able to then access events. Let's see if this works so far. So save it and run it. You should not get any prompt yet because we haven't said we haven't used the login function yet. And we should not get any name to appear on screen yet. Let me confirm that. Save it, run it. That's our latest code so far. No prompt yet no names on screen. If, some, if nothing appears on screen, check the console. You might get some errors to deal with. But this is what this looks like so far. The big difference is that these previously working, previously automatically running statements are now waiting. They're waiting for us to invoke the login function. They're waiting for us to run the login function. So let's uh, do what we did last week. Last week we had, I think we had a simple link, and then we had on click alert. Well, we've invented our own function, so the same concept will work. Uh, the way we'll do this is we'll put this in the plain old HTML. So actually, we're going to get out of the script block and write this as plain old HTML. We could do it with document write, but we'll have to kind of do it a little messy like, like this, so we'll, we'll skip that. So what we'll do is we'll actually back up before the whole script block. We'll go way back, line 8 or so. We'll write login. We'll put the A tag around it for a simple link. Later on we can make buttons and other cool stuff.
it's going to be a link. The word login will appear on screen. I want to be able to click on that and to run the function login. And then it'll ask us for our name and show it on screen. Well, as we saw last week, an A tag has a, an attribute, href. equals, it has an attribute and a value, uh, we'll do the pound symbol. This is just for it to behave like a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. We need it to have the underline, we need it to have the little finger to click, so it's going to behave like a link, but it's not going to go anywhere. That's what the hashtag means? That's what the hashtag means, basically. It doesn't go anywhere. The, uh, pound sign. We add another attribute here, space, as we saw last week, on click equals quotes. And so the on click attribute will let us then call JavaScript, will let us use JavaScript. We've got a brand new JavaScript that we invented called log in parentheses exactly how we named it down there. If you named it down there, login all lowercase, you need to call it here login all lowercase. And that should be what we need. Save it and, and run it. No prompt happens until you click that, and then everything should behave as it did a little while ago. Let me confirm mine works. So I've got the text right here. Login. And it happened before all of this text because it's happening before my script. That should make sense. First display this, then have your JavaScript. And that's what we see on screen. There's login, then that stuff. So then if I click, pop up. So right now, if we could pull back the curtain, now the JavaScript, the web browser has jumped down, way down here to my code to run this first statement in my login function. It's waiting for my name. As soon as I click OK, then it'll jump to the next statement, document write. There's my name. And everything else disappeared. That's a by that's a byproduct of document dot write. Can you see the code again? Yes. So it did what I wanted, kind of. It did display my name, but everything else disappeared. So this stuff might be more complex than we think. But it's kind of doing what we want, little by little. And as we continue to learn, we'll make it do more of what we want. Um, all of this time, document write was, was working well for us. But now suddenly, document write erased everything and put that text and it. said, this is what you wanted, right? No. We have to uh, further refine our code to really make it do what we want. Um, but we're almost at the end of the day. But how many of you did this work for? Did it, did it display your name? All right, anyone need a little help? All right, here's that code.
All right, so now we've dealt with an event. That was the third piece or the fourth piece over here. You've got objects, methods, parameters, events. On click, for example, we had something trigger our code. Previously, we had the implicit event of the document loading the automatic event of the document loading. And so the web browser would go from top to bottom and just run every statement. And it got to this statement over here, login, and it says, okay, great, I understand what login means. But we never said, use login. Like we said, use console, uh, or use document write. Um, use login. It wasn't until we actually clicked to invoke it, to run it. And then it displayed it on screen, and in our case, document right, then erased the whole screen and wrote that text. So that's a quirk of document.write. Depending how you use it, it may simply add more to the screen, as we saw in these examples, or it may erase the whole screen and put it put something brand new. So that's fine for us at the moment, even though I'd like to log in with another name. Um, we'll be able to really add to it a little later. Um, no, well, let me finish my thought here because then when we come back next time, we'll, we'll go further. Let's do this so that it doesn't erase everything and it just simply adds to what's on screen. So let's do this. Let's, let's back up to our line 8. We've got the tech, we've got the link that asks us for our name. And previously we talked about this generic placeholder tag, which remember we styled with CSS. Does anyone remember that generic placeholder? Div, the div tag. So let's add a div tag. And remember that we were, we had a bunch of divs and we had some text in the divs. We wrote some CSS. Some divs were yellow and some divs were blue, right? We were able to control each div with CSS. We can control a div with JavaScript as well. We're going to leave this like this, that there's nothing in the div. It's a completely empty container. 
But in order for our JavaScript to know to replace this empty div with our name, it needs either a class or an ID. So let's go in and add the attribute to this div and ID equals. IDs and classes work for CSS and JavaScript. And we can call this ID um, the name. So here's a placeholder. It's on screen, but it's invisible. And what I want to happen is when someone logs in and it captures that name, I then want to display that name in that div instead of replacing everything on screen. So slightly different here. Let's go back down to our function definition so we can then refine this. Uh, the document.write is not going to give us what we want anymore. We have to change it a little bit. So go all the way back down to the bottom and let's comment out line 44, document.write, and instead we'll do it like this. Um, this is more complex here. We'll do document dot. So we've seen that before. We're going to deal with something on the document. Here we've got um, uh, the method get element by ID. And notice the way I'm spelling it. Very important for you to spell it the same way. Get element capital E by capital E ID only a capital I. I know when I started off with this, I made the mistake of writing capital ID because that was what would make sense, but no, it's a lowercase d for ID. We're saying somewhere on screen, somewhere in this document, there is an element, and we're going to get it, we're going to use it by its ID. So open close parentheses, open close quotes, and the ID that we're talking about is the name. So get element by ID is a is a is a JavaScript uh, method, one of the longest named ones, but that's the same as dot prompt dot console the get element by ID. Look, and we've got a parameter, the name, which is the ID on screen. And we have one more dot inner. HTML. Now we're saying, okay, we know which div we're talking about, the one called the name, because it's got that unique ID and it's on screen on the document. Now we're going to change this property of that div. We're going to change the HTML inside of that placeholder equals. all of this. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just uh, ju uh, We'll just do p1 name. For the moment. Semicolon. I think this will be fine for the moment. So here's how we're changing it. Instead, use a placeholder and show that text, the person's name, show it in that placeholder. Basically, all of that is saying that. Now let's try it. Uh, make sure this is spelled exactly the way I've got it. Get is lowercase e b i. So as soon as I save and run this, I have a I have, uh, I have an invisible placeholder called div right there. Do you see it? It's invisible. And then when I click on login, it asks for my name, John. Click OK. And there's John. It didn't replace everything else. It took that placeholder and changed the, in, changed the HTML inside of that placeholder to be whatever name was asked for.
And actually, I think what we really want is this whole thing inside of the parentheses. Let me confirm that. Yeah. Okay, so actually, a little bit more refined here. Um, if we only tell it to display the P1 name, then it'll look plain, because we had no styling. So we took the, the part here in the parentheses of document.write. I just took everything. The quote h1 plus p1 name plus quotes slash h1. I just put it all at the end here. Equals this plus this plus this. And then it displays nice and big and bold. And I lost my semicolon there. But a semicolon at the end. And there we go. And now it should display big and bold again, like a moment ago. So notice this was another way. We had document.write this, which didn't give us what we wanted. It blew everything away. This is what we want. In a placeholder, display the result of the name, and the HTML will render as valid HTML, even though it's a string. It takes it as, as, as valid HTML because we're saying, change the HTML inside of that div to be this HTML instead. And we can keep we can keep logging in. So it'll keep asking us the name and it'll keep displaying it. Document.write was not the right tool for that particular job. For other things it might have worked well, but in this case it didn't. Raise your hand if that worked. Okay. We're about to get to the end of the day, so uh, we're gonna end here if you're code didn't work, we're going to do the lab in a moment, and then you can call me over, and I'm going to put my code in the network folder. But to recap of what we've done today is a lot of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. This is obviously no means that we're a pro. There's still a lot to learn. There's still mm -hmm. 580 pages in theory. Uh, but we've gotten now exposure to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There's still a lot to learn. Um, and we're seeing about the content layer, presentation layer, behavior layer. This stuff does something. It, it reacts to, to you, to the user. And it can affect the content layer and the presentation layer. We can write CSS using JavaScript. We can write HTML using JavaScript. And we will often need to once we have a more complex project because when you visit a website and something pops up after you click or something turns red after you drag, that's all JavaScript. That's all behaviors happening with triggers. Um, and in this case, it was on click. Any general questions? Okay, so we'll end the lecture at this point. When we come back on Thursday, we'll keep going. I believe on Thursday we'll We'll start the project and then we'll continue it. We're not going to start over anymore. We've done it enough starting from scratch. Next time we're going to start a project and continue it for the rest of the two and a half months of this whole course. So um, thank you for coming. Make sure you, if you are new today, make sure you enrolled, you, you printed your name here, you took the stickers, and make sure that everyone also signed in on the pink sheet. You can sign out if you'd like or I'll do it for you. But uh, when we come back next time, we'll do it again.